Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I had to pull out the Simon Says Stamp Winter Flower Stamp Set to make another card. I absolutely adore this set, and this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, just looking at the color combos, I was like, oh, need to use this set again. <laughs> so I'm using some Canson XL watercolor paper. I had two pieces set out. I was planning on making two cards, but in the end, only made one. And I'm just stamping the images onto the cardstock with Simon Says Clear Ink and then coating it all with Detail White Embossing Powder. And after I stamped each image, I just put on the embossing powder, but I didn't heat it yet. Just um, applying the powder helps me see where everything is so I'm not overlapping any of the images and it just um, is visually pleasing. So once I'm done stamping everything, coating it with the embossing powder, that's when I'm going to pull out my heat tool and melt everything. And I had this piece cut to about, it was bigger than an A2 size card. So it was maybe like five and three quarters by four and a half inches, something like that. Um, because I did plan on, since I'm going to watercolor this whole piece, I want to tape it down. And my original thought was I was going to die cut it the full size of an A2 size card. But you'll see in a few minutes that that's not what I ended up doing. So for my watercoloring, I'm using my Peerless watercolors, which I haven't used in a while. I will have a video at the end linked to if you ever, um, if you never saw it, about how I organize my Peerless watercolors and whatnot. And I chose them for this because they're super, super vibrant and they're just super easy to use. Like literally, I these were one of the first, I think, watercolors that I ever got. I've had them for so many years, I can't even remember, but... All I do is get the area wet and then pick up the color directly from the little peerless sheet with a wet paintbrush and then apply. Super, super simple. The color um, moves beautifully and like I said, they're just gorgeous and vibrant and so easy to use. So I did my poinsettias in um, a pink shade and I just applied the color a little more heavily towards the center. And then for the berries, I'm doing them in kind of a berry, like I mixed a red and then like a really deep, almost like a magenta pink because the color combo was basically pink, a berry red sort of a color and green. So once I'm done um, painting all of the areas of the poinsettia, I'm gonna go in and do these berries. And this is also where I love having the, um, all the images heat embossed. That's my preferred way to watercolor because it just makes things a little bit simpler. And you also, I find you don't have to be as neat as perfect. One, with images like this, and two, with heat embossed images, it just, I don't know, it takes away the pressure rather than stamping everything with black ink and having, you know, harsh black lines. I find I can be a little bit more free and creative. So if the color does seep out past the embossing, I'm not too worried about it. So once I was done, um, the berries and the flowers, I watercolored in all of the leaves. And then after I quickly heat with my heat tool, like off camera and let everything completely dry. And then I went in and added a second layer, which I don't normally do. Usually I just, I want to be watercolored and done, <laughs> but I really wanted these to be super, super vibrant. Plus I wanted to experiment a little bit with just adding like some more intensity with color. So I went over everything again with another layer of color with the Peerless and I just love, it just made them so much more vibrant and I'm so much more happy with how this was turning out. So did the same thing with the um, poinsettias, just another layer of pink. If a person really wanted to, you could add like other colors and really create, you know, some depth and dimension and shadowing and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I just wanted like really, really bright, bright colors. So added another layer of green, of course, and then another layer to the berries. I assume they're berries. I don't know. That's kind of the nice thing too about sets like this. Anything like floral and nature type elements in that are somewhat open to interpretation, or at least that's what I do anyway. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want. So got all the colors on and then I wanted to add a little bit to the background just to make the rest of the white embossed lines pop out a bit. So I would just get each area wet with the clean water from my paintbrush and then I was adding in just the tiniest bit of like an aqua blue from one of my peerless packs just to give it that little extra something. A person could totally do gray. Normally that's what I would do, but I wanted the blue just to really make these colors kind of pop, I guess. So I was very liberal with the water because I didn't want um, the color to be really super um, deep or anything. I just wanted it to kind of fade into the background. So once I was done applying all of my color and the one area near the top there, I did accidentally pick up a bit of the red and it bled a little bit, but I just left that because I was like, oh, I'll deal with that later. 
I had an idea in my head to fix it. <laughs> so let everything completely dry. And I'm going to peel off my painter's tape. I wasn't careful with the painter's tape, although it actually came off perfectly. It's usually when I'm trying to be careful that I end up ripping everything. So peeled off the painter's tape and I ended up using one of the largest dies from the Simon Says stitched rectangle uh, wafer die sets. So die cut that. So I've got my rectangle and it's slightly smaller than an A2 sized card. And then I have the Simon Says Believe dies, which were super popular when these were released. I think this was part of the Stamp Timber release. I had the hardest time getting my hands on these and then someone actually sent them to me. It was so fabulous because I just, I love it. I love this font. I'm pretty sure this is Christina Werner's handwriting. I just love it. It's so gorgeous. So I die cut the base or the background of the Believe die from vellum. And then the word itself, I die cut from some silver glitter cardstock, and then I applied some multimedia matte adhesive to the back of it and pressed that onto the vellum. And that's the one, another reason why I love this die so much. I love having that like shadow, basically. I don't know what you would call it. Shadow, background, word bubble <laughs> um, for this. It's just that little extra something. I really like that. So I adhered that all with the multimedia matte. And then I flipped this over and applied the adhesive again directly behind the actual sentiment itself. I didn't want it oozing out at all because you'd be able to see it through the vellum. So I just applied a really thin layer of that and then adhered that directly to the cardstock here and pressed it down and then put an acrylic block over it because with watercolor paper, usually adhesives, they need to kind of soak in a bit. It's a little bit harder to adhere to them, I find anyway. So I just used my acrylic block to hold that into place so it could dry. And then I pulled out some doodle bug silver sparkle um, little embellishments and that's what I used to cover up that little oops with the watercolor. <laughs> just slapped one on there and we're good to go. So added a few of those just to kind of tie in more of the silver with the sentiment. And then my card base is some Simon Says Fog cardstock. So I cut the cardstock in half and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. So it is a top folding A2 size card. So five and a half by four and a quarter inches. So once I've got that um, pressed down with my Teflon bone folder for the inside of the card, I'm using the Believe stamp set. And my original idea was to stamp the sentiment and then stamp some more of the flowers with um, the clear ink. But instead I stamped the sentiment and then I pulled out that big word Believe from the set and inked that up with the clear ink. I just, I loved it. I thought it would just look really well and just kind of tie it all together. So I stamped that pretty much right over the sentiment I'd stamped in the black ink and I just, it's hard to see in the video but you can see in the picture at the end. So it just created a great watermark effect and then I adhered my watercolor panel with foam tape and that finished off my card. So I have links below the video to my blog post with info about the color challenge, links to all the supplies used. All that info will be in the description box below the video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!